Good morning, and what a show we've got lined up for you today. We really have. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without a visit from the one and only Sir Cliff Richard is in the house. Yes, he's dropping by the house very shortly. But first, I'm going to raise a glass. I'm delighted to introduce you to a true icon of British music who has sold a staggering 300 million <laughs> records. 300 million records! And created some of the most memorable Christmas songs in chart history. It's the one and only Sir Cliff Richard! Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome nice, back. Nice to be back. Welcome back. It's, it seems like we, we can't do this show without you, really. I know, but you're the only one I know that can interview and cook at the same time. Well, let's put pressure on me now, anyway. <laughs> we'll, give it, we'll give it a go, anyway. So, yeah. I, I know you love your food. I know food is a big passion of your entire life as well, uh, like music. We're going to just... I'm going to create a wonderful little dish. It's a little bit of spice roast cod with a nice little bit of sauce. We're going to do that with tamarind. It's really, really simple, really nice. We've got some roasted cod over here. Beautiful line cod. I'm taking a couple of chunks out of this. And I'm going to roast it off in the pan. Now, first of all, I, I, reading about you and reading the stories about it, I just find it absolutely fascinating. But when you were a young kid, walking down that high street, yeah. when you were a young kid, you heard that music. This was in the 50s. Yeah. And, and you heard... Was it right? It was playing in a, in a car and you heard this track. There was a car pulled up and the window was down. The, the... Uh, engine was running and the radio was on, but the guy jumped out, I don't know, by cigarettes or a m magazine or something. And we came and we were looking at that, and then suddenly we heard, Since my baby left, you can find a new place. Well, and I'm thinking, we, and then the guy got in the car and drove off, and we didn't even know who it was, but it, it changed my life. It was when I heard that that I thought, I want to do that, I want to be like and that. And that was Elvis. That was Elvis Presley, Heartbreak Hotel. And the other interesting thing, Elton John, he's got a book as well. I don't know when he wrote it, but he said a similar thing. He heard Elvis and he said he felt that nothing was ever going to be the same again. Well, you say that. I mean, music wasn't the same again because the 50s right. must have missed them a magical era to be in. Because it was open to so many different things, wasn't it? It was... It's a, I described it in my book as a tsunami of music came over. One minute... We were listening to Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald, and the next minute it was Elvis Presley, Little Richard, Buddy Holly. But it was a, a fantastic change. And if you were 15, or as I was at what 15 when I first heard Elvis, there was nothing else to listen to. I'm and also me. for you overnight, because you know you venturing at 15 years old, you thought. I, I've got to do this. No musical experience. No, not played an instrument. Anything. No, my you dad. You end up my, buying this, buying this guitar. Yeah. Self-taught. Well, my dad taught me the first three chords, and then yeah. for years I believed. Well, for months I believed that there were only three chords in rock and roll because <laughs> you could play or shook up or move it. There's three chords are quite a lot of music when you realise it. That's right. Yeah, and then suddenly, Chip, uh, Ricky Nelson came out with a song called "Poor Little Fool." And there was a fourth chord. I went, what? There's four chords in rock and roll? Yeah. And it was C, A minor, F and G. And the A minor was new to me. So we're going to fast forward. You, you then, I mean, the, the rise for you was stratospheric. But I've got to talk about the Drifters and, and that era. Yeah. When you put that band together, what, 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 what was the catalyst for that? Because, you know, music can be quite brutal. You, 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 you made the decision, you got rid of some certain, certain people in the band. Yep. Guitarist as well. I have to do that. Just yeah. so happened to employ Hank Marvin, which is not too bad. A, <laughs> not too, not bad, too bad, bad a choice, is it really? <laughs> why, 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 how did you meet Hank and why, why was that catalyst? Well, the three of us had, had already started a little band and we played local pubs and things like that yeah. and earned a little bit of money, but we got quite clever in one pub, particularly where the guy used to pay us, pay us in coins. Yeah. We, we got a few fans turned up. People came to have their drinks there and they quite liked us. And we said to them, Can you pay? with uh, paper money. So a lot more of that, we got paper money. We got, we, we doubled our income. <laughs> you doubled your income. Uh, but that was a magical time for you, Reed. Was When was when was the moment where you got spotted? Did you still have to, there's a little story where you doing demo tapes in Oxford Street and all the bits and pieces like that. Was that we made, for a fiver and bits Yeah, and we recorded two songs. One was a Jerry Lee Lewis song and one was an Elvis song called Lordy Miss Claudie. And that was given by the guy that was an acting manager, I mean, he wasn't really a manager, but he came and said to us, <laughs> I can make you a star. And right. we picked ourselves off the floor after having laughed him off. Anyway, he took this demo and gave it to a, a, an agent. Yeah. The agent took the demo 
and something else to Nori Paramore, the, promote, the, the producer of EMI. And EMI, Nori told me he played him a track, wasn't me. And he said, look, I've got, I've got singers like that. Have you got anything else? And George Ganju, who was the agent, said, mm, well, I've well, got this. Love it. Nori played it and said, bring him in. <laughs> so it was as sharp as that, we came in, we auditioned, and in, in the bus, my ex, we had a, now our third guitarist, he had written Move It on the bus. And so we played Move It, and Nori said, I'll see you in the studios. <laughs> and all these stories and more are in the book, because you go on to say that, you know, your industry is not just about yourself. This is about accumulation of everybody in involved in it. Influences. None yeah. of us. I'm trying to make sure people understand that none of us make it ourselves. It's so I've impossible. just, I've just got. The, I mean, the book is just full of stories. I mean, Bobby Rydell. This is named. The name so cool. He named. They named Greece the high school after him. Rydell, Rydell, the Rydell, Rydell High School. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. That's what. That's a legacy and a half, isn't it? He didn't have many, many big hits, but he had success. Loads of it. What do you? I, I fascinates me every time I talk to you about what do you. What do you put it down to in terms of? your life, your career? Because I know you work incredibly hard. You, you do work hard. Yes, you do, but in the end, there's... Only the public can really explain it, and even they can't explain it. You can <laughs> say, to, I, say what, what did you like about me? And they go, well, we just, well, we just like you. So in the way, the, the public, and they have always been the ones, you can make a record that you think should be number one, and it won't make it. Yeah. And it, you have to convince the, aud the audience that they want to buy it. And, I mean... I'm and you thinking, have to keep I'm, going, though. That's the, you, you take knocks to, in the industry. You don't stop. You keep going. Yeah. And uh, I'm saying one of the most requested songs for me to sing on stage is a song called Miss You Nights. It's like singing honey. <laughs> but it didn't make it... I think it just crept into the top ten. And now it's the most requested song for me to do. So I, I did it on stage and I said, look, this song did not make number one. And I looked at them all and said, it, and it wasn't my fault, you didn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> now, as well, as if that wasn't enough, you bring out a book. You've also got bringing out another album. You just finished a tour last month as well. Yeah, we just, uh, yes, I finished in Glasgow and it was a, only an eight-day tour. Not Only an eight-day tour. This, well, yeah. the, the album, what, what number album is this on, on, on the list? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, but it's an unusual album in that the songs, people might recognise the songs, so they've been re I've released them before, but what they did was they took my voice off the original records and took the band away. And so what they did was they put an orchestration behind it. Wow. And to hear, I, I mean, I loved it. Hearing Carrie, the song Carrie, um, done with just a gentle guitar and an orchestration, strings, wide for sound with strings. Yeah. Do you remember the song Wide for Sound? We are, I do. Yeah. Bit, yeah. <laughs> so, well, we're just going to show you in, in action. Just take, take a look at this. Well, I'm frying my garlic. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. Have a look at this. <laughs> Young Ones, when was that? Oh, that was just came from the film, and that would have been in 1961, something like that. Uh, what is amazing, when, it, when you listen to this album as well, you've got a bit of bluesy. There's a, when you put the, 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 the jazzy bluesy notes with it, when you put the, well, the, the strings to it. But the, yeah, the, the, my voice came from where it was. Uh, and the, the, I didn't change anything. I did ask them to find something different for Living Doll and Summer Holiday, because in the originals, I tended to use a more breathy voice. Yeah. And, it, it's a, and they've turned out to be really good. Jazz songs. It's a, like a jazz backing, trombones, saxophones, and things. Well, I wish so you a... all the very best with it. And what what does Christmas 
bring you? Where, whereabouts in the world are you travelling to? What are you going to do this Christmas? Where I've, are you going to spend I've, it? I've got... At this moment, I'm just going to go back to the States to visit some friends. But, you know, ch Christmas has changed. When, when, when my nephews and nieces were children, they used to come to my house with, with my sister and we celebrate Christmas with everybody. But, of course, they're all married now. They go to their, their in-laws for, for Christmas. So Christmas doesn't stop, though. Well, my oh. house is always open for you and we'll always feed you. <laughs> is that right? And we'll always... You can always... But you've got a nice little bit of roast cod to start with. But there we have it, roast cod with a nice little sauce to go with it. That's the tamarind. I've got a little bit of spice in there, some ghee, some garlic and the, the uh, tamarind. And then we're going to serve that with a little bit of coriander. So hopefully I've done it justice, interviewed at the same time while I've been cooking. They're and brilliant. You, and you've still got all your fingers. I've still got all my fingers <laughs> and I've not burnt myself. Cliff Richard! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Right, there we have it. Hey. All yours. Have a Thanks. taste of that Thanks. with the sauce, everything else. Try and stop me. The fish. <laughs> look, it's just the beauty. I mean, look at that. Oh, Lime, look at that. Oh. Line caught cod with a little bit of the brown sauce with it as well. Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, then, isn't it? It's terribly good. It's super tasty. Um, uh, fantastic. Well, you're going to stick around. We've got chicken for you at the end of the show, but oh, there we okay. have it. Oh, Cliff Richard, right. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, so if you join us later on this morning, I'll be laying on. Oh. But I'm back in the kitchen with Lisa Goodwin Allen, Richard Bursonay, Judy Love, and last but not least, Lisa so Cliff Richard! Yeah. Happy Christmas, guys. Happy so Christmas. I thought with this we'd do a wonderful dish for you. I thought we'd do a, a classic with homage to the Frenchman over there. Thank so you. we'll do a, a chicken blanquette, usually done with veal. It's a chicken stew, it's brilliant for Christmas. So we're going to serve that with some pillow rice. The first thing we're going to do is portion up our chicken. We tart off with our chicken like this, we're going to cut it up. Take the chicken, whack it through, and you cut through, and you take the crown away from the legs. Like oh, that. wow. So then you can cut this into four pieces. We can cut that through, like that. That was that one. And then we cut through the legs and the thighs, which is cut through there. So there's no cutting through, other than bone, through that bit. This is through the joints. So your legs and your thighs through there, and you cut through your legs and your thighs through there. This, you turn your attention to this bit, you cut it through there. Whack it through. That's one piece. And you do the same thing with that one. Pop it through. That's another piece. Question. Yes? How can we get the cleaver? That's How can you get the cleaver? <laughs> uh, you can speak I to mean, me nicely. You can have it. You can take it home. <laughs> <laughs> but this, and you cut it through. There you have four pieces of white meat, four pieces of dark meat. And we're going to add that to the pan over here. Now, first of all, Judy, I've got, got to mention the fact that your... your finalising your tour at the iconic Palladium. I know. I, do you know what? Even hearing you saying it, I'm like, yeah, I am, aren't I? I'm at the Palladium. <laughs> it's, it's a phenomenal place. I'm sure you've played there many uh -huh. times. Yeah. yeah, so, hello. I'm going to play somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you me? I mean, I, I'm so excited. Um, and I'm Nervous? Waiting. I'm very nervous. Do you get I'm, nervous at all? Course? I do. I've got this big persona, but trust me, even before I was coming on here, <laughs> I get really nervous. But to be at the Palladium, yeah. I went there to have a quick look, see what it was like and do a little video, and I, I burst into tears. <laughs> As soon as I stepped on the stage. Well, I, I, when I've, 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 done, I've just finished it my photo. I ended at the Palladium. But you must have played that. What was the, what was the most magical place you've ever played in, in, in terms of your, oh, your. For me, for me, the, the, the uh, Albert Hall is the most magical wow. place for me. It's got a fantastic, intimate, intimate feel. Yeah. <clears throat> really good. Well, have, you ever, have you ever played it using... Because the, the organ is supposed to be absolutely amazing there, the organist as well. Have you ever incorporated that with your music? No, or? no, we haven't. We, I've got a very kind, a very good pianist. And if, he, if I got an organist, then he'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you know where your loyalty lies. <laughs> yeah. Right, so we've got... This is, so we, this is your chicken stew, basically. What you do is you take the chicken, you then put everything in it. So rather than the usual stew where you brown everything, yes, this one you do completely opposite. You don't touch it. You just bring it to the boil, pop the lid on, and then we pop it in the oven. So this roasts in the oven, and you want to roast this for a good 45 minutes to an hour. 
Now, classically, you can serve this with what you can do this with a little bit of salad in France, but I like pilar rice. Salad, pilar rice, nice. Pilar rice. So you take off with some onion. We're going to do a mushroom pilar, a little bit of basmati rice, some mushrooms over here. Slice through with some onions. Cook it without colour. Exactly the same thing. And then rather than stop, we're just going to add some water to this. And then the whole point about this is this sauce. So you they, basically you pick out the chicken, like Lisa's doing over here. Portion it into your little pot like that, and then we put it back in the oven to keep warm, because then this is the sauce that we then finish off. But I'm going to do my little pilar rice over here. Now, Cliff, we've got to mention again, because these people who are just waking up this Saturday morning may not know that you're here to... to, to well, you're here because this is the several times you've been here, but you're here because you've got, you've got a double whammy. You've just finished the tour, you've got an album and a book. So what should we talk about first? Wow. Both. <laughs> talk about... Both. <laughs> Let's, talk, let's talk about the book, because this is, I mean, this is something special. I know you're into music as well, but yeah. when you look at these pictures, Jerry Lee Lewis, all these amazing artists from the 50s and the 60s, yeah. you can't get this on mobile phones anymore, no, these no, amazing no. But, pictures. But the book, I did the book because I wanted people to know that people like us don't make it on our own. If it hadn't been for Elvis, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, the Everly Brothers, Jerry Lee Lewis, we wouldn't have anything to look up to. And you, and were they, saying, they, you, you were saying all the, all the famous, famous guitarists, people like Matt Knopfler and yes. Eric Clapton, all, all their, 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 their inspiration came from Hank Marvin in Hank your band. Hank Marvin and, and, and the pink guitar that he played, which I bought. <laughs> That's really? Why I the fact. Well, he couldn't afford it. Mm. And he said, if we had a friend of Stratocaster, we could change our sound. So I said, OK, and I ordered it. And it, but we didn't order one. We didn't know it was going to be pink. But so what, anyway. I, to, I went out and got a pink jacket. Right. <laughs> I couldn't. But it was a hack, and Hank became somebody that all these Brian May, Mark Knopfler, these people have written up. I've read the things, and they said they got to be guitarists because, because of watching Hank and mm. his pink guitar. And I kept saying, Did you say he was left-handed as well? Hmm? Did you say he was left-handed? No, he was right-handed. Right but the guitar is a right-handed guitar. And last year when I toured, I did three songs on which that guitar played solos. So I, I, I got it back, gave it to my guitarist, and then we realised that he is left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> we all play like this. So this guitar, therefore, was turned that way upside down. And you can't change the strings. It's still... So he learned how to play it. and. He, he got the most fantastic reception when I said he just played those solos That's incredible. upside it is down. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Terrific, yeah. Uh, look, we're just going to take our little mushrooms over here. So the pilar rice I've cooked. That's got a little bit of the. Uh, we put a little bit of uh, greaseproof paper on it, which is in here. Which that one? So we lift that off. That's oh, your wow. nice little pilar rice, oh. which is done with the wild mushroom, with the mushrooms anyway. Over here, I'm just going to saute some mushrooms off. But what, what oh, is it about what is it, what is about touring and stuff like that you still love? Is it is the fact that you because nowadays the music industry is massively changed. I mean the comedy oh. circuit is exactly the same thing, and it now you've got to get out on the tour. It's very similar to the music thing. The used tour. to be DVD sales. Yes, but now the, the tour is the heart. Yeah, now yeah, yeah, the tour yeah, is the same yeah, thing. People don't buy records anymore. But the thing about for me, if I could record every day of the year. I would go into a studio, but of course yeah. it's hard to find 365 songs to record. <laughs> but, but, but going on tour is the second favourite thing, yeah. because that's when you reach out to the people. Connect. Yeah, yeah. You connect with these people that have supported you. But also globally-wise, really. Where, but was there a moment where I, I've always wanted to ask you? Where was there a moment where you thought this is this is it? Because there must have been a moment quite early on in your career going. This is this is crazy. Because you wanted to be Elvis. You wanted the, the very stuff. The first time I ever heard Elvis on that car radio thing, uh, that's what I, I thought. That's what I'd like to be. Mm. And 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 then sometimes when my career started, they'd say Cliff is the answer to Elvis. And I used to say to the journalist, No, Elvis is not a question. You can't be an answer unless it's a question. Elvis is the king and always will be. And of course, even Michael Jackson would have been impressed in some ways, but uh, all of us, yeah. we, we've got so many th people you, that we. Do we've... you think that's ever going to happen again? Because you look at the magical times. I think '80s was an amazing thing for music. I know you were in the '80s as well. That was a magical time as well. You managed to do that per decade, but you've seen that for the 65 years. Do you think there's going to be a decade like the '50s, like the this... '60s? There's no reason why it shouldn't be, but it's going to be different. If you don't buy records, then that, that whole thing gets dumped. And therefore, the, the way we made our singers money is you make a record 
and that sells, and then you go on tour to sort of support it. You now go on tour to make your money, and the record just is an advert. And it's so quick. I think that is so, music is so, so more accessible, and the people that make it from via social media or so on, and you don't even have to have a record label. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's... The only trouble is, I don't know about you, but uh, people say to me, listen to this, and they've got iPhone, and I'm going, and it just sounds like... <laughs> it sounds like a tinny... Yeah. You can sometimes say, oh, she or he sings well, but... You see, I like listening to stuff on our proper Speakers. albums. I like yeah. listening to jukeboxes, that kind of stuff. I just think it's, there's oh, a magic box. Yeah, yeah. It's it's magic it's era. Look, so we've just got it. We've got our rice over here, which I've, which I've cooked. Oh, yeah. We're nearly there with our chicken. So this is our chicken with our mushrooms in. We've got our croutons. We've got our nice little peel of rice. This is the key to it. This is the bit where our... You want me to do this, don't you? Yeah, don't... you're doing it. You mess it up, it's your Yeah, this is, this, is, this is the last bit where you can make a complete mess of this. Uh, because what we do with this one is you put in this thing called a liaison. Now, what the liaison does, is you can see this mixture is quite watery. Um, what the liaison will do is thicken it all up. So this thickens it up. So we take tarragon, which has gone in there at the beginning. We take it's a bit tarragon... Like a custard, isn't it? It's a bit like a custard, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but this is where we've got to really watch that's it. That's so time, is it? That's a little bit of tarragon, tarragon. got in there. Oh, tarragon. But then... We take this mixture. Now, if you don't put, if you put this in and boil it, it's ruined. It's scrambled eggs. So you pour this in, and it's a good idea to season this beforehand. So plenty of salt and pepper, like that, like that. This is where Lisa stands back, and I've got to do this. Why have I got to do this? You've got, you've got Mrs. Star. Why have I got to do this? Do you know what? This is the moment, and as much as I'd love to cook live, this is the moment where I just sip my glass of wine <laughs> oh, yeah, and sit back. Yeah. <laughs> so we just mix this together like that. And then this just thickens up. Now, we need to put this over the top just till it starts to thicken nicely. Because that's not far off. It's all put science. it back on again. It's all science. Well, isn't the it? thing about it is, it's got egg yolks in it. And you, you treat it like a custard, really. So as you start to mix it, the, the bubbles should start to disappear. You see the bubbles start to yeah. disappear now? Yeah. As it starts yeah. to thicken up. So I'll do it with a spoon. As the bubbles start to disappear, now it starts to get thicker. I didn't think I'd be doing this with you watching, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look, taking notes, mate. You see you've got this oh, yeah, thicker yeah. mixture? That, that yeah, like look that. at that. And then you take the mixture and you pour that Ooh. over the top of the chicken. Oh, my God. Could that be a soup? This could be a soup. <laughs> if you want to take this home and this is a soup, that is a soup. <laughs> does, that, can... does that go back into the oven? Or... That just leaves as it is, exactly as it is, and you just take this chicken out now, and you can take the piece of chicken like that, Oh, so the with the mushrooms. Chicken and from the... Oh, I see. It's bits and pieces. Delicious. So then yep. you've got the sauce, you've got everything. It's a magical, magical dish. And it's what a dish that I wanted to do for both of you guys. That looks delicious. For Christmas. The there is my chicken blanquette with pilar rice. Well done, Chef. We've done it. Uh, done. Uh, it's not split. <laughs> Cliff, that's for you. Oh, thank you. Right, and then you want the brown meat, is that right? Yes, please. A little please. bit of brown meat in here. Oh, my God. A bit of brown meat for the brown meat. I'll give you, the, give you a little bit of, <laughs> little bit of thigh. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of thigh, which is on there, and a little bit of the rice, the pilo rice, which is there. But then don't forget, you need it with a heart-shaped crouton on the side. Oh, OK. Because that's how you eat it with. That's yours. Oh, well, that's supposed to wait. Yeah, you just got... No, you can... Oh, wait. Good boy. Come on. <laughs> you can crack on, don't crack wait. on. I'm Richard, chop it away. Yeah. Yeah, Richard, you get to dive in as well, but I'll oh, give you a little bit. You, you've, got the, you've got the pan, if that's all right, Lisa. Oh, I love that. Is that all right? Yeah, got... absolutely. How is that, anyway, with the sauce and the, the little bit of the rice? Absolutely. I think it's super, super tasty with the rice mm. and the sauce and everything else. The rice has mm. got a sweetness It's lovely, to isn't it? it? It's just a little bit. Have a, have a taste of this. You, you just have it. I'm going to get in there. Mm. Gorgeous. It hasn't split. That's, that's really good. I had a sleepless night because of this last <laughs> night. That was, I was cooking for you two. In fact, all four of you, five of you, so that's, that's <laughs> taking flight. But I'm thinking, I've got to create this for all you lot. But I'm happy with that. But there we go. Perfect end to a perfect Christmas show as well. Uh, that's all we've got time for today. A massive thank you to all my guests. Uh, Lucy Hanley from that amazing trout farm. Sat Baines, who's, like I said, has got a fight. Lisa Goodwin-Allen, Richard Bertonay, and, of course, Judy Love and Sir Cliff Richards. <laughs>
good luck with the tour. Good luck with the album. Good luck with everything. Good luck. Good luck. And we thank you. No, well, I'm just I'm just here every day. I'm not going anywhere. You can, <laughs> you can you. come back whenever you want. There we go. See you back at the same time next Saturday morning, where the countdown to Christmas continues with Jess Gareth Ward, Richard Corrigan, Brian Turner, and Strictly Come Dancing. Shirley Ballas will be here. No doubt, Cliff will be here as well. Until then, <laughs> take care. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Have a great weekend. Uh, thank you.